Welcome to the Child Care Business Coach Podcast with Evelyn Knight, where mindset and mechanics come together for success. Evelyn Knight is the leader of the ECE revolution and is on a mission to touch 1 million children's lives through the elevation of the ECE community. Hello and welcome to the Child Care Business Coach Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time out to join me today. It has been a busy, busy season for me. I don't know about you, which is what makes this such an appropriate topic for me and one that is just in my ecosystem. So today we're talking about time management, time management. Oh my goodness, right? Well, and thank you for taking the time. Some of you are so busy. The fact that you're here with me today and you took the time to be on here to watch this, or if you're listening to the podcast, maybe you're multitasking and you're really just using your time wisely, but thank you either way. I really, really do appreciate it. So I've just been getting so much about time management. I launched a couple of weeks ago, my course value your voice. It's the true value of your voice and helping empower early childhood coaches, speakers, and not just early childhood, but it, I've got people from all over different industries that have come into this course because they want to learn how to get their voice heard, how to get on stages and speaking engagements, different things so that they can help empower others. And it's just such a beautiful community. I'm just so thrilled and excited to have these people in my ecosystem now and the beauty that they're sharing. But the big thing I keep seeing, whether it's my child care center membership or it's value of your voice or one of the workshops that I do, or even a live in-person training, whatever I do, I just keep people hearing people talking about not having enough time. And right now, as I speak, wow, my schedule is packed. I am on this run where I will be in, oh my gosh, four states in two weeks just with the speaking and different things that I have to do. I'm just going from one space to another and it does get crazy, right? And there's things you live, you learn, but there's some hacks that I've created throughout my own life that has helped me because I will be the first to admit, I am not naturally good with time management. Time management is not my natural forte. So I have to force myself to really do things and to have hacks. I've been talking to you guys a little bit about the fact that I do have ADHD, right? I have three different types of ADHD, which makes time management even more difficult to deal with for me because people with ADHD, we don't have a concept of real time. So we tend to be late for everything. Um, it, it's just, it doesn't work the same for me. Like I can literally be doing something for two hours and it feels like 20 minutes. It's very difficult. Um, so I have to have hacks. And I also had to really look at my relationship with time. I have this book right here. Ironically, it, um, I was looking, it's called Take Back Your Time by Christy Wright. And it's a great book for anyone who has a better relationship with time, right? Something I really encourage you guys to study, and um, I'm really, with your relationship, right? I'm really focusing a lot of next year on your relationship with money, your relationship with time. It's really a scarcity mindset thing. Because a lot of times when we think we don't have enough time, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough resources, that is a scarcity issue. And so... Time is one of those big things that we feel like we have scarcity on. I didn't realize that I had such a bad relationship with time until um, actually, uh, gosh, it was not even that long ago. Now, I've, I've had hacks to manage my time for years, but I realized that I have major scarcity time issues that really probably came about after my husband died because it really made me question mortality. And I realized that the one thing in life that we cannot make more of, there is plenty of money out there. We can always get more. And just because I have money doesn't mean it's taking from someone else, right? Things like that. There's plenty of, like for me as a child care center owner, there's many of children out there. Uh, there's plenty for me to enroll, but time, there's a finite amount of time. And when it's gone, it's gone forever. I can go spend money and I'll make money back. It always comes back. It's like a river that flows, right? Sometimes the banks are really full. Sometimes you're in a drought season, but it always flows and it always comes back. 
but time is a little bit different. And so I realized that I do have time scarcity issues just this year, probably early this year. I realized like, wow, I, I can time bend and I can hack time and I've got all these things to make more um, useful. I can't talk right now. Sorry. But to make my time more useful, all of those things. But what I didn't realize is that part of that comes from a place of absolute scarcity because I'm always feeling like that there's not enough time. And then what that does to me is I don't always prioritize correctly. It gives me a misperception of what I should be prioritizing. And with that misperception, I'll prioritize the wrong things because I'm thinking about it wrong, right? Because I have not had the best relationship with time. Now it has made it though, so that I am very good at when I need to manage and crunch, I can manage and crunch. I've got hacks like nobody else's business. But the number one hack that I have found that has created so much time for me and has really taken tasks that used to take me eight hours a day to do and crunch those tasks into maybe a two hour task instead is respecting my time. For the longest time, I did not show myself the respect that I would show somebody else. If I make a doctor's appointment, I'm going to put it in my calendar. I even block out drive time. Okay. So like for my calendar, I will put like doctor's appointment, right? And depending on how long it takes me, I block in my calendar. How long is it going to take me to drive there? How long is it going to take me after? So I'm so meticulous about like when I have to show up for somebody else, I'm going to block the time. I'm going to protect that time, right? I just protect it really good for those other people. So then I would have a very important task. Like right now I have a book deal in the works and I have to write, I have to write. So I'll go in my calendar and I actually have um, my assistant do it for me, block the period of time where this is book time, protected book time, right? But if somebody calls me and says, hey, Evelyn, we really need your help with this. Do you mind jumping on Zoom? Or can you come down to the center Or my son might, hey, mom, come sit and talk with me. I'll look at it and say, "Uh, it's only for me. And I'm like, yep, I'm not doing anything. And I'll drop what I need to get done for me. So then what happens by the end of the week? By the end of the week, I have piles of things that I did not complete because I did not prioritize the time I needed for me. And really what that comes down to is a lack of self-respect. I am not showing myself the respect I would show you if you and I had an appointment, right? I'm making an appointment with myself and I need to treat those appointments with myself no differently than if I had an appointment with you. I need to treat myself with the same courtesy that I treat anybody else. And so do you. When I came to that realization, it changed my narrative on time. It really did. It changed so, so much. And it can for you too. When I find that I'm slipping out of control with my time, because again, I'm not natural at this. This is hacks I have to put into place so that I can manage my time. When I find that I start slipping on these good habits, I start noticing that is usually the number one thing I'm not doing. I'm not showing myself respect. I'm not respecting my time. I'm not prioritizing correctly. And I end up exhausted and overworked. It would amaze you what it does to a person to start and stop, to try and multitask. It wastes so much time. On average, every single task that you try to either multitask or you're starting and stopping, starting and stopping, every time you do that, it costs you an extra 45 minutes. Think about that. How many times a day do we do that? It's insane when you think about it. I'm willing to bet you do it 10 times a day. And by the end of the day, you're probably losing five, six hours a day on things like multitasking. But we don't realize that we don't see it because we're not calculating the time it takes us to get our brain back in gear, right? To find our place on the spot that we're missing on. Or just to like squeeze this in here and there and all the things. It is crazy 
I teach this concept for my clients um, on time management. And I just got done doing a training on time management about how to protect your time with what I call fire time. And I schedule fire time in my schedule. And basically I call it fire time because unless the building is burning down, you better leave me alone, right? Literally why we call it fire time. And so when I have my fire time and I first started doing this, it would take like, I would block off like three or four hours to do the work I thought was gonna take me three or four hours to do. It turned out that all I really needed was 90 minutes a day. Literally tasks that used to take me all day long took me 90 minutes. When I shut my office door, I put my phone on do not disturb. And I said, nobody's allowed to bother me. Now, this is something we literally had to train our staff to do a staff meeting. This is something I sat down with my family. When I first started this, my children were smaller. My husband was still around and I had to train them. Mommy gets fire time. And fire time means that unless the house is burning down, this is my time. And I used to do this very early in the morning. I would get up about an hour and a half before everybody else. But um, specifically my son, Ronan, he would wake up and he would know. He would just know. Oh, look, it's not 6.30 a.m. yet. That means it's mommy's time. Mommy's closed. We used to joke, mommy's closed until 6.30 a.m. And he would just quietly go do something else because he knew that was the time I needed for me. I have done other lives on the importance of a morning routine. A morning routine can change your life. I kid you not. Getting up a half an hour even earlier just to center your brain, it literally sets the stage for your entire day, which is why it was important for me as a young mom at the time to really just even put those boundaries with my own children at the time, right? And this was when they were a little bit older. Like I think my youngest was probably eight or nine at the time, but it's so vitally important. It is so important. And I know it's like, oh, but I need the sleep. Yes, you do. But I cannot stress to you how much you need that alone time too. And training your family also trains your children, your spouse, your staff, whoever is in your world to have healthy boundaries. Having healthy boundaries is a good thing. And taking the time for you, showing yourself that amount of respect, it teaches the world that they have to respect you too. And for those of you moms out there, it will teach your children that it's okay for them to stand up for themselves and that they should have healthy boundaries as well. Remember, we are modeling everything for them, right? And when they see you modeling healthy behavior, they will grow up to model healthy behavior. I think we get a lot of mom guilt, don't we? I know at the time I used to, but it really is empowering and so incredibly helpful for each of us to really stand and empower, have those healthy boundaries, show ourselves self-respect. Because remember, we train people how to treat us. And if you're not showing yourself respect, then the people in your world probably aren't either. So get a hold of your time. The other thing that I do is I do a lot of annual planning now. Annual planning has become a game changer for me in my life. Basically what we do is I lay out what do I want for next year? I do um, something that's called reverse engineering. I know what my 10-year goal is, right? I, I set up a 10-year goal. And then I look at it and say, okay, how am I going to achieve this in 10 years? What do I need to do in the next five years? Then I look every year, every year, this time of year, I'm actually getting ready to host my training on this. I say to myself, what do I need to do this year to get to my five-year goal that's going to get me to my 10-year goal? And then every quarter, I reverse engineer that. What do I need to do this quarter that's going to get me to this annual goal? And then once a month, I go through. And I say, okay, what do I need to accomplish this month in order to get to my goal? And then I take that one step further and I do it every week. And then every day I pick three things, three things every day that are going to get me to that ultimate goal. And so I do host a training every year. It's actually coming up pretty soon that focuses on helping you learn this concept. And we actually literally do this together where we create your annual plan, what are the things you want? And we're going to reverse engineer it. 
We also will uh, create your, if you're a child care center owner, I will teach you how to create your child care center's annual calendar so that you can really just streamline and not have so much stress. You guys, whether you're a child care center owner, whatever it is that you do, if you create an annual calendar for yourself, it will, I cannot even begin to tell you the amount of stress and anxiety it will lessen in your life. Just for an example, the things that you're going to put on here is like um, planning for, oh my goodness, we're in the holidays now. So the example for the 4th of July, right? You're going to put the dates right now in next year's calendar. We're in the parade every year. So I'll put like parade, then I'm going to reverse engineer that and say, okay, all of the things that need to be purchased to decorate our van must be purchased by this date. The float must be done by this date, right? And there's due dates for next year. I will tell you guys, by November this month, I will know when our Christmas play for next year will be already. I'll be able to tell you when 2024 is Christmas play, when our Thanksgiving feast, when our Mother's Day gifts are ready and due, right? That is something we will put in our calendar. Um, Things like your staff's anniversaries, All of that is planned out and it's just, there's, it's in there, it's systematic, it's done. And then you assign it to somebody else, right? A lot of this, but what that does is it really helps to empower you to take back your time. All of this is time management techniques. So if you want help with your annual plan, whether you're in my speaking course or anything else I do, let us know. Join the course right now. It is a three-hour long course that you could take with us. Uh, It is a game changer for your entire life. I'm telling you right now, game changer. One of the hacks that I use that helps me like nothing else. So make sure that you get into this training before it's too late. It will, if there's one training a year that you do with us, this is the most important childcare business professionals training, most useful. And I have literally have clients that will tell you that it has changed their lives. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out again. If you're listening to the podcast, please hit subscribe and give me a review. I really, really appreciate the reviews. They just, it's my way of just getting paid back for what I do. So pay it forward give me a positive review. If you're watching YouTube, subscribe and like, it just helps me out a lot. Um, I love pouring into the community. And so that's my request of you. If you want to give back, just make sure that you go to YouTube, hit subscribe, hit like, or you subscribe to my podcast and give me a positive review. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining Evelyn today. For more information, please visit childcarebusinessprofessionals.com.